Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the last event of our current series called Find Yourself in the Future. I'm Rebecca Chisholm, Regional Manager for Cisco Networking Academy across North America. Today's program is designed to connect students with cybersecurity professionals and partner companies looking to hire individuals to join their tech force. It's an exciting time to have a career in cybersecurity, certainly, which is experiencing immense growth globally. Last night, I looked at cyberseek.org, and it showed more than a half a million job openings across the United States where companies are looking for people with cybersecurity and skills and training, and they're very well-paying jobs. We'll take questions posted in the chat while you're watching this, so please, if you have a question posted in the chat, and we'll answer that in the chat or online. And at the end of this, you'll have a chance to earn a certificate if you complete a very short survey at the very end. So without any more delay on my part, let's get started. I would first like to welcome our Tech Talk facilitator, Swati Honda. Welcome, Swati. Thank you so much for joining us today with your panelists. I'll pass the program over to you, and we look forward to your talk. Thanks, Swati. Thank you, Rebecca. That was a great kickoff. I couldn't have said it better that cybersecurity is the career of now as well as the future. It's like you can't think of cybersecurity as a standalone, right? The networks we use, the technology we use in our day-to-day -day lives, if it's not secure, we are not going to be on it. So it's amazing that we have this wonderful set of panelists that you see on the screen. I would like to welcome Noreen. Hey, Noreen, thank you for joining us. And as well as Jed, uh, I think I want to give you a chance to catch my breath and for you to say hi to the wonderful audience that has joined us today. Thank you, Swati, for having me over here. Um, delighted to be here, and thanks for each and everyone who joined us today. Uh, by my means of introduction, my name is Noreen George. I'm a cyber threat intel engineer here at Cisco Systems. Cybersecurity is at the core of my career. I really like it, and I'm really excited to be here to share my expertise and experiences so that uh, the students and everyone else who's looking forward to join the career um, can learn from what we've gone through and how you can advance in this career. Thanks for having me here, Swati. No, fantastic. No, it, it, and that's what we're here. We want to hear your experiences. Jed, do you want to share with us, you know, uh, what's your journey been so far and a little bit about yourself? Hi, uh, I'm Jed Simpson. I'm currently an IT security analyst for a small credit union uh, in upstate New York and the Albany area. Um, Let's see, uh, I went to a two year school that had the uh, Cisco Networking Academy. So I initially um, started out, you know, on the networking side and began offering a cyber ops class there, which, you know, really piqued my interest. And um, through my professor, uh, Karen Woodard, um, she was able to get me an internship um, at this credit union. And uh, after a few months, they actually ended up hiring me full time um, so, you know, I, I really love the cybersecurity field and, uh, you know, I'm here today to, you know, share some of my experiences and, you know, help, uh, you know, people um, who are looking to advance, you know, into the field as well. No, that's pretty cool. And I'm sure there are a lot of folks on the other side of this panel who are listening to you, Jed, who feel who would perhaps want to take your place, right? They are in your shoes right now. <laughs> They are learning through NetAcad and they soon hope to be, you know, be on a panel soon and work in this field. So I'm so glad you joined us and you know, we'll talk through it. I think Biswa is going to just be, as we move on through the slides, he's going to join us and talk to us about his journey too. So Elliot, our wonderful, you know, he's, he's like the magic behind moving the slides so he can share. Oh, why don't, uh, you know what, Trent, do you want to ensure, talk about your panelist here? And then I can move on to the next slide. Sure, I'd be happy to. So um, in the second half of the event, I will be hosting a, a virtual career fair with uh, recruiter uh, leaders from Red River, CDW, Ingram Micro, and Cisco directly. So we've got some exciting um, updates from those organizations about their hiring practices, how they hire from NetAcad, networking academies, and train up talent 
internal to their organizations and some of their uh, current open positions that they are recruiting and hiring for. Back to you. Thank you. Elliot, could we move on to the next slide, please? Perfect. Uh, so I'm going to open it up. And as you move on to the cybersecurity panel, Noreen, Jed, you shared, you know, what your day job is, uh, just like, you know, what you do. Could you describe a little bit more? Like, in, I, let me start off as what I do here at Netacad. Being. So I lead the strategy of cybersecurity. So if you are today already taking a course in cybersecurity, that's what we work on. And my job is to make sure that we continue to provide you information and bring in experts like you. That's the perk of the job. But part of the job is just to share with you what the future looks like. How do we continue to be relevant and share that strategy? So I really love my job. Prior coming to this, I worked as a security architect, but now I get to work in a totally different field. So it's very exciting for me. So that was a little bit from me. Um, perhaps we start with you, Jed, uh, you know, just what you do in your day to day job. And Noreen, if you don't mind, you could follow after that. Sure. Sure. Um, so, you know, I think, um, I guess the good thing, you know, about my employer when, when I first started is they, they kind of just, uh, you know, put a lot of trust into me and they, um, you know, put me on a lot of things. They didn't really kind of hold me back. Um, and, you know, I showed, um, I think one of the things that impressed them was, you know, the knowledge that I gained from Medicaid, you know, you really, um, you gain a lot of knowledge um, you, doing all the labs and, you know, all the, you know, the, the lectures, you really, um, Gain a leg up, um, I think, and um, so you know, basically, uh, my job now um, I'm the primary uh, administrator and our analyst of our uh, SIM. Which, uh, if you're not familiar with the term for anyone, you know, watching, that's the security information and event uh, management system. Um, that's basically your security core for you know uh, your security operations. Um, you're going to be collecting you know uh, different logs from the network and you know correlating them uh, in one area. And so you know my job is to make sure that system is operational. We're gathering the you know correct information. We're alerting on the correct information, and, um, and you know to be able to protect our environment from threats uh, and have actually a quick uh, detection time. That's key. Um, I also, uh, you know, administer endpoint protection, which, uh, you know, it's, it's AMP. <laughs> so not to be, uh, you know, but we do love AMP there, um, which AMP uh, is a Cisco product. So, um, you know, it's, it's advanced uh, malware protection. Um, so, you know, I, I work on, you know, updating that on, on endpoints and, you know, monitoring alerts from that, that uh, you know, system. Also monitor Windows antivirus alerts um, and respond to those. Um, I handle, you know, our our IPS intrusion prevention system. Um, see, I do well. We have a proxy as well. I work on that as well. Um, I do vulnerability scanning. So you know, uh, when you so, get into so you're like uh, the superhero of SOC. Uh, That's what I'm hearing you, Jed. You're like one man show managing the SOC center and making uh, so that that that's amazing. Noreen, so, you work in threat yeah. intelligence as well. Do you mind sharing what you do? Yes, I do. Thank you, Swati. Uh, what does my day look like? Uh, my day is filled with adventure, um, curiosity, and just interesting facts. Because when I wake up in the morning, uh, my concern is what cyber threats changed overnight. Um, the cyber attack I was chasing last night or last day or yesterday is different from today. So that's where goes the adventure. Um, the cyber attacks are constantly changing. And so we as security experts are always constantly learning and trying to catch up, right? Or even to understand what's happening. So with that full of adventure, um, I can never sit with certainty knowing that everything is 100%. It only takes 1% for them to get into the network. So always staying proactive, always staying engaged, and always trying to stay ahead of the curve on the cyber threats trending um, so that I can be able to advise not only our customers and our clients, but even my fellow peers, because cybersecurity is everybody's responsibility. So bringing that knowledge and intel 
internally within Cisco, using Cisco security products, and also advising our customers from small businesses to large corporations, how to better mitigate and protect against the attacks. That's my day to day life. Oh, wow. <laughs> Talk about that, yes. right? There's never a dull moment in the week. Nope. And I see Biswa has joined us. Thank you, Biswa, for joining us. If yes. you might, could you give a little bit introduction of who you are? I know who you are. I'm a big fan. But for the rest of us here on the panel, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and also answer the question that we have here for you? What does a typical day okay. look like cool. for you? Cool. Yeah, so first of all, thank you for inviting me for the panel. Uh, my name is Biswa Panda. I'm VP of Engineering for Cloud Security. So that has a um, few products like uh, uh, DNS, um, uh, Cloud Lock, uh, and these are the uh, ScanSafe. These are the cloud based security products that I. Uh, I would say a typical day for me. Uh, goes a lot with connecting people, like for my role, um, uh, connecting with cross-functional leaders, my direct staff, engineers. I think in the past two, three months, as you can imagine, given the current situation, I feel one of the most important job of leaders is to be empathetic and connect with people. Um, all right. Uh, so, and and I have been pretty much increased my frequency of connection with people, so that's one. Um, I would say a lot of rituals that I do in terms of getting the pulse of the business, and that could mm -hmm. range from weekly ops review to monthly OKR planning to career conversations to talent reviews. Um, obviously, that is not happening every day, but I would say mm -hmm. in a span of a quarter, uh, I, I mm -hmm. try to maintain a ritual so that it, it almost mm -hmm. like a periodicity of these kind of events. And through that, uh, and and the and the third thing I would say is a lot of customer interactions. I think that is where I get exposed to a lot of cybersecurity stuff. There are customer escalations. There are which is obviously reactive, but also there are proactive conversations about these are our pain points. Uh, how can you solve? Uh, clearly, the COVID situation had resulted in a lot of our customers rethinking about security when everything is remote. Uh, you have a different challenge to deal with, different threats to deal with, uh, and, and and I engage in those kind of conversations with, with the customers. Awesome, thank you. And so you guys, you notice how varied the nature of the jobs is. You have Jed and Noreen who are right in the epicenter of doing technical stuff, whereas Visma has a role of more being, you know, making sure that the teamwork of it. So that's an important part that I want to highlight, right? And that as you go in this, the technical aspect as well as the non-technical aspect that you have to take in mind as you move forward into these cybersecurity careers. Elliot, next slide, please. So folks, over the next few slides, I'm gonna share with you, and then you guys, you know, that's the wonderful panel. It's amazing as if you knew what slides I had. I'm gonna just talk about very briefly the trends that exist today, things that are on top of mind for me here at Netacad, right, as we progress. So what you see on the screen is just this landscape, the reality of today, right? We have driverless vehicles, we have a lot of things happening in the cloud. We have embedded sensors. So the IoT devices, including the smartwatch that I wear, the connected home app applications, everything's exploding. Next slide, please. And as we move on to this connected side, with every bit of increased exposure, there's this piece of increased attack surface. So look at the numbers on the screen, right? The mobile subscribers, the car applications, everything's exploding. So I don't know who's the culprit, but some of the times I've been uh, busy in not muting my mic, somebody's speaking. So if you're not speaking, can you please be on mute? Tiny request. Thank you. So that's what well, I was talking to you about the attack surface, right? Every time it increases. Next slide, please. And you would notice that Elliot, and when we move on to the next slide, that I'm talking about the work from home situation, which we again touched on, that with all these increased attack surface, there's a huge increase in the number of remote devices, and not just the devices, 
there are a lot of folks where the attack complexity and the frequency that has exploded. Again, the current situation, it's never a better time to be in the field of cybersecurity than right now. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a great field. It's one of those fields where the employ unemployment rate is zero. So you're, we are always in need of finding you know, a job. There's, there, we need professionals. There's a big employment gap right here. Elliot, as we see onto the next slide, you would notice that the top concern for the government here is, so it's all about following the money, right? That's the easiest way to find out. Six trillion by next year, that's just the predicted cybercrime damages. As you know, a lot of the things that happen in cybersecurity, they're the white hat skills and the black hat skills, things that are happening on the dark web, the ransomware damage, is supposed to grow by 57x, more than 50 times. I'm not saying into, it's like just, just, it's an explosion when you think about it. There's so much at, you know, at exposure here that if we don't take care of it, if we don't have the right folks to protect our environment, our government is at stake here. So just, just keep that in mind how big the field is. Elliot, as you move on to the next slide, I can share with you that the number one concern for CEOs, and it's no surprise, is that when a data breach happens, so Jed, Noreen, you know, when you were talking about this, while you, you were sharing what your team does, it's just, it's interesting to see that you've seen from all studies, not just here at Cisco, it's close to 4 million is the average cost of a breach. Think about that. <laughs> I'm not saying 4,400, I'm saying 4 million. That's just the average cost that they can declare for someone. And it takes more than six months for a breach to be discovered. So you have individuals who did something, we don't really come to know about it till six months after. And just imagine how much damage that can cause if that happens. So I've shared with you, you know, the threats that are on top of mind for me. Elliot, as you move on to the next slide, what I want the question I want to ask uh, Biswa, Jed, and Noreen is just around what cybersecurity threat for you is you know is like the biggest concern today as well as in the near future, right? Uh, if you don't mind, Biswa, you could go first, and then Noreen, if you could answer after. Yeah, so I think let me focus on the current crisis that we are going through, right? Uh, that started in three months. And clearly, this is a good crisis that uh, our hacker friends do not want to go for a waste, right? So what are some of the trends we are seeing? Uh, the first is, uh, I, I lead a product called uh, DNS security, where we essentially provide security at a DNS layer. So we have seen a sudden surge starting March, mid-March, on the number of DNS requests to domains that contain a keyword either COVID or Corona, right? So what does that tell you? So that tells me a couple of things. One, the threat actors are creating new domains, creating new websites, and using that as a way to entice uh, like consumers to go to their site. Because when a crisis like this happens, everybody's nervous and everybody wants to be on top of all news, right? They want to know about vaccines, they want to know about the virus spread, they want to know about the in-country uh, uh, sort of spread. And uh, while there are a lot of valid sites, there are equal amount of malicious websites being, being created overnight, right? just to attract traffic and they attract the traffic and then you click on a link, you get infected. So that's one category that concerns. I think it just, you, essentially you are exploiting people's emotional uh, sort of hunger, right? On these kind of things and exploiting that. Second thing I see is a lot of email campaigns, right? Like for example, we have seen some threats where you'll get an email from World Health Organization completely legit emails, right? There will be an attachment and that attachment will tell you about some of the safety precautions that has been approved by World Health Organization. These are all phishing campaigns, right? And you click on the attachment, you get infected, right? 
similar category. So first one is the website, second one is email. Uh, I think those are like uh, phishing has increased. Uh, people like even if you remember um, early early March, there is a acute shortage of face masks, right? People were scrambling to get face masks. I saw plenty of fake websites selling face masks, uh, and people will go to that website. You provide all the information there. It, these are all phishing campaigns, right? To get all your information there. So as the situation, um, and of course, th that was, as if that was crisis one. Um, off late in the last two to three weeks, there is another crisis that has emerged. It's about social injustice, racial injustice, right? And I'm pretty sure I haven't seen yet, but looking at the trend, people are going to exploit even that, right? To create campaigns around that uh, fundraising events, right? For that, again with a malicious intent. So, uh, I think just unfortunate that while these are all uh, uh, like painful times and everybody is trying to be empathetic, everybody is trying to do the right thing, uh, the bad actors are going to take advantage of that, right? And, and finding the right balance and right boundary may be hard. For uh, for uh, people like you and me and, and the regular consumers, uh, right? Um, yeah, and then people will fall victim to it. No, well, that's a great point, Vizvai. Basically, people are preying on you know the emotional tenderness, the aspect of the human. Anytime they say weakness, that's what they prey on right now. So that's something that we all need to be aware of, right? And especially working in this field as aware consumers. Noreen, did you have a take on this just on, you know, the biggest threat today as well as near future? Sure, I'd like to touch on and highlight what this one says. The phishing attacks are on the rise, but one thing I want to step back is to look at the fact that data has become the new commodity. It's the hottest item and cyber crimes have spiked up. Um, it's very alarming concerning because the way the cyber crimes are taking place to cause ransomware attacks, they are after your data, the organization's data. Um, and we started seeing that the cyber hackers are starting to act as groups, right? They're starting to join together as unity, forming like sort of like a cartel to be able to launch even tough attacks. So they're after our data. So it becomes a sensitive situation whereby where is your data stored and who has access to it and what do they do with your data, right? So that's a concern to we as individuals, users, right? Is my data safe? Um, can I guarantee that? That's, that's a question that is always up in discussion. So looking at that kind of trend of the attack on data, the cyber ransomware attacks are on the rise and it's a concern today and in the near future. Um, again, we say it's not a matter of if, it's when the attack occurs. And just the fact that they are after organization of individual data is, is an alarming attack, right? It's very alarming for all of us. And for, for us as cyber experts, we always have to stay abreast and um, alert, knowing that the attackers are out there constantly looking to a way how they're going to venture into an organization or even your own personal data to um, cause, cause that a lot. And for even as this was said, we've moved from working in the office to global remote workforce. So even as when we're working from the remote global workforce, the attackers now are luring into attacking through VPN connections, right? We used to think VPN was very secure, but now we found them they've started attacking even those mediums of connectivity and even sending those phishing attacks. And once they're already in the network, it's already too late. Um, another threat concern that really I take there to me, and that's why I like Net Academy because it brings user awareness. User awareness is very important and it's it's not deemed as a security threat in the red landscape, but it takes me, you, and somebody else clicking that link and causing an attack on the network. So that's a concern that I'm really wary of and I'm always encouraging users, be educated, be on the know and educate others. Fantastic, Nori. And my favorite sentence and what you shared was, it's not that if we will be you know, attacked, it's when it is going to be happen. And it is just a matter of how prepared we are, right? So the job, Jed, what's your take on this? I'm really curious to hear about that. I'm sure others are too. 
Sure. Um, well, I would say the biggest threat, I think, you know, in my perspective is a uh, cloud breach. Um, you know, uh, years ago, it was just, okay, let's stand up servers in our data center. And, you know, that that's where our network is. But, you know, with companies going into the cloud um, at a rapid pace, um, your attack service is greatly increased. Um, and, you know, the cloud, if you ever get into cloud security, uh, you will find out how many nuances there are within the cloud. And, you know, the different models out there, um, you know, how they can be attacked, you know, you really need to be on the monitoring uh, of your cloud instances. Um, you know, for example, uh, Capital One, prime example, a recent huge breach. Um, you know, they were hacked uh, from their Amazon Web Services instance and, you know, huge data breach. Um, so, you know, nobody is immune to these threats. Um, and, you know, uh, another one I would consider a big threat is probably insider threat. Um, you know, those people are the ones that are already inside your network. Um, and if they, you know, want to do something with your data, they may have the ability to do it without being detected. And so, you know, you really have to kind of have a mindset of like, nobody's above the law. Um, you know, you really have to be on top of things. Um, so, you know, those are a couple of things that I consider to be, you know, some of the top threats right now. Um, Oh, wow. No, you bring up a great topic. Absolutely. You know, if our networks and our technologies are moving to the cloud, the security has to move on to the cloud and that's where the future is. Right. So right. You know, all great points brought in everybody. Right. We talk about it. So moving on. So Elliot, if you could move on to the next slide and I can share with you my one of my favorite quotes, right? Cybersecurity can't be left to technology solely. It needs the human input. That's where all of you experts come in, and that's where the next generation of cybersecurity experts that we are trying to create at Netacab come into the picture. We may have the best technology, but we, when we talk about the insider threat, the human threat, the user awareness, Noreen, that you touched on, or when you talked about you know, dealing with the human vulnerability, all of these all will deal with that human input, right? So it's just about being smarter on the next, being aware of the next step forward. So one of the things as we are looking through and we have wonderful set of people that are telling me what the questions, and I'm getting to see a lot around career trends, right? When they're hearing us talk about it. So Elliot, if you move on to the next slide, let me share with everybody just how the career trends look at it globally, right? So today, cyber, if compared to other IT jobs, cybersecurity jobs are growing three times faster than an IT job. So that's how cool this job is, and I'm sure all of you can attest to it. It's the jobs are growing, but the harder part is just finding the right applicant. And that's where I said, Jed, I feel there are a lot of folks who would be, you know, talking about uh, being in your place, in your shoes, walking from Netacat to the other side, is just finding that right person who's qualified to do these security jobs. And then we talk about just looking at the number of job openings available today, 4.07 million. Those are the job openings available globally. How crazy is that? And that's where I keep saying, you know, as you move on to this field, just thinking about the level of unemployment, it's zero because there's so many, so much opportunity available here. Elliot, as we move on to the next slide, you would, I just broke this up, right? This is from the ISC Square study of the breakdown globally of the cybersecurity openings that I talked about, the 4 million. And 2.6 million job openings are available in APAC today. How big is that? And for North America, more than 560,000. <laughs> so it's, and you know, you, as you see through the other numbers on the screen, the unemployment opportunities for each region is amazing. There are a lot of opportunities. It's just about developing those skills and developing how to think, being aware of, you know, having that, uh, mindset of solving puzzles, treasure hunts. If that's your thing, then this is definitely your field. Elliot, could we move on to the next slide, please? And here, along with the opportunities, I always like to share the salaries. 
just look at the salaries. And these are average salaries, by the way, guys. These are not top end salaries. These are salaries that we have noticed across the regions for individuals working in the field. So that's the average salary. We have seen people make much more around it as well. So something to keep in mind, a lot of opportunities, a lot of monetary benefit as well as you join this phase, plus the excitement that our panelists talked about, right? They talked about being one, one step ahead, understanding. So it's like, hey, I love my job and I get paid really well to do it. So what more could you ask, right? Next slide, Elliot. And as you see on to the next slide, I now I bring a question again to our panelists. So, Jed, I'm going to start with you this time. You've seen what can somebody do? So, we talked, we looked at opportunities, we looked at the salary information. So, how does one get started? How does one get started in the field of cybersecurity? Um, well, I'd say, you know, a couple intangibles, you know, you, you want to be curious, you want to be, be a self learner, you want to, you know, do your own research because the, the field changes, you know, every day. Something that might be true today may not be true tomorrow, um, and there's new threats emerging, you know, every single day. Um, and you know, I, I would encourage you know you to get into a program like Neticad because you know that that will show that you know uh, you have a base of knowledge. Um, and Neticad is you know a respected program, so you know an employer will you know even though you may not have the years of experience, an employer will say, okay. You know, they had, I know they have a base because I, you know, I trust this program and, you know, I can start them out at a certain level. And, you know, I, I know that they can handle this. Um, you know, I encourage you to research, you know, different uh, certifications, um, network plus security plus, uh, you know, uh, Cisco certs like, you know, uh, CCNA security, cyber ops. And then, you, you know, highly recommend looking into, you know, ISC squared, uh, SSCP, you only need one year of experience for that certification. Um, so, um, you know, uh, just, you know, really be ready to, you know, learn daily and advance yourself. And, um, you know, that's, you know, that's what I recommend. No, that's pretty cool. You're right. So basically what, what I'm hearing you say is that. Pretty much the otherwise there's a perception, unless you have experience, you can't get started in cybersecurity. But what I'm hearing you say is as long as you have the willpower and you're a self learner, that doesn't, you know, that shouldn't stop you. There are a lot of opportunities out there. This right. one, I would love to hear what's your take, right? As you see your teams grow and you have these career conversations with them, how does right. one get started right. on this? Yes. So I think in the field, you can probably view the jobs in two categories. So one is if you are interested to build security products, right? Uh, that our customers would deploy. So that's one category. So that's a classic uh, development engineering roles, uh, right? And of course, the, the development in the cloud is no different than any other cloud products. I think you need to have the, classic skills around different languages, like modern languages like Python, Golang, uh, you need to be well versed in those. Um, but the way those jobs are unique compared to any other development jobs are uh, the security uh, mindedness, right? So sometimes you call it DevSecOps. I don't know if you have heard of this term or not. So there is, uh, so it used to be a development, then came DevOps, all right, which is a pretty standard term used in the cloud, where you are not only developing, but you are also operating on your on your software that you wrote. Then, then came DevSecOps, where you are not only developing or, or testing or operating, but also you are responsible for the security of those assets that you built, right? So I see from my point of view, there is a massive shortage of skill sets in DevSecOps. You can find pretty good developers. You can find pretty good DevOps engineer because cloud is not a new phenomenon. It has been going on for last 10 years, I would say. So you can find pretty good operational engineer. What you cannot find today is pretty strong DevSecOps engineer, or sometimes you call it AppSec engineers, right? So these are the engineers who, who have strong development skill set, but they also know about security, they know about secure coding practices. They know about how to use, how to do threat modeling. They know about uh, once you deploy this code in production, 
what are the security risks it exposes. So that's a whole different skill set. All right. So my strong advice would be get as much as possible on DevSecOps because that's where a lot of shortages. So that's one category. The second one, second category is uh, probably just running a SOC, running a security operation center where you are not developing the product. You are most likely taking different security products built by different vendors, but ultimately you are responsible for security monitoring, incident response, security analyst, uh, those kind of roles, right? And every company has that. Uh, some like some people call it infosec, right? The, some other uh, groups call it security operation center. Uh, they typically report to a CISO, right? Uh, and that's your career path, right? So if you if you are on the development side, maybe as you think about your career journey, you may end up as a VP of engineering, leading a large organization, building products. Similarly, on the security operation side, if you want to use that as a career. Uh, your path would be like a CISO, right? Uh, like your uh, your future. So those are the uh, and and uh, and on that camp, uh, the kind of skill sets you need are more around ability to analyze security threats, security monitoring. There are plenty of tools. Maybe you need a lot of skills around automation, so that if you are running with ten different tools, you don't want to do manual monitoring. You probably want to automate everything so that it, your life becomes easier. Uh, how do you take action once you once you detect a breach, right? What is the workflow you follow to remediate that? How can you shorten that? How can you reduce from like two three weeks to two three days, right? So those are kind of the skill sets, and there are many different technologies there uh, that you could learn. No, so that's amazing. You're right, Biswate. Is a lot of opportunities. And even though DevOps has been there for a long time, DevSecOps is coming up and it's about finding that intelligence, right? Folks who have, they know to code, but then finding them the right angle to think of security so that it's in build versus after. It's not an afterthought, rather it's in built into the process. Absolutely right. right. I'll tell you, yeah, but I'll tell you a funny story. It is so important for me because I, I'm not building, I'm building security products, right? So, so it is non-negotiable for me not to build it the secure way. Like even for non-security products, people are building in a secure way, right? So, so every every group goes through the budget planning process, right? And they decide where we want to hire people. I made a decision last month that I'm canceling all job recs except DevSecOps engineer. That's the only skill set I'm going to hire. So that's the mandate for for my group. So that sort of tells you the importance of these kind of roles and the and the shortage of skill set. Every customer I talk to, they if I ask, hey, what's your top two or top three challenges? They obviously talk about the increase in the threat landscape, but they also highlight the shortage of skill set. So it is real, right? Every customer realizes that the shortage of cybersecurity skill sets is the biggest challenge I'm dealing with. Absolutely. So Noreen, I know you've been very humble, but I want to share with the rest of the panel that Noreen actually leads a big mentorship group. And one of the things that she's dedicated is to especially encourage women right in the field of security. So I'm not, I won't be surprised that this is not an uncommon question for you. There are a lot of folks where it has been asked to you. So could you share with, and uh, you know, as you talk about it, not just for women who unfortunately is just at 26% today globally, folks in cybersecurity, but overall anybody, folks of any interest, any gender, how do they get started in this field? Thank you, Swari. Yeah, this is a question I get frequently. When I say frequently, it's like a daily basis, and I'm used to answering because I like helping people navigate through the career of cybersecurity. Um, I do a lot of mentoring for others because I think it's very important to share knowledge and skill sets with others and encourage others to join in this industry. Um, I keep it simple for my mentees and my mentors. I tell them the three E's. Education, just like Jed and Biso have highlighted, get your education, get your certification, get your um, whatever you have to do to get your education, go to school, college, get all your certifications that you need. The next step you need to have is 
experience. Um, do an internship, volunteer uh, at any company or any opportunity that's presented to you, right? So what were you doing? When you were doing with your education, you were preparing yourself for an opportunity. I always encourage my mentees and mentors, always be prepared for an opportunity that you not have, that have an opportunity presented to you and you're not ready. So keep up your skill sets on your education, then work on your experience, right? Those entry level jobs, don't turn them down. Take them up, run with it, learn as much as you can. And the third E is exposure, because we need each other. You can do it by yourself. We need a circle of network with others. And how do you get this exposure? By finding a mentor. A mentor is a person who will be able to answer those questions you have. What's, what domain of cybersecurity do I need to join? Remember, cybersecurity is very vast. There are so many domains. And honestly, people who are joining this industry can get overwhelmed trying to navigate through their career. I keep it simple. You either want to be on the offense, right? Those are the people who are doing the pen testing, ethical hacking, or you want to be on the defense. These are the blue teams, people who are putting those mitigation techniques, or you want to be the incidents response, because again, nothing is 100%. We can have the offense, defense, but sometimes the attackers get through and we need these incident responders to join into there, right? So keep it simple, education, experience, and exposure. The other one is always identify whether you want to be on the offense, defense, or incident response. Once you be able to find out what domain of cyber you are, you'll be able to navigate through this career. And maybe end up where this one is talking about, DevSecOps, you know, maybe that may be for you. Or join the blue team, who you're always the defending people, or the incident response, who are always coming after the attack has occurred to respond to those cyber attacks. But a key highlight, Find a mentor because a mentor will be able to navigate um, some career paths for you and be able even to break it down for you in a way that you're not you're gonna you don't have to struggle by yourself. Others have already walked through this path of uh, navigating the career, so why why struggle alone? Join other people, join the mentoring group, learn from others, and keep on learning. No, oh, fantastic. I couldn't have summarized it better. And Elliot, as you move on to the next slide, I think I'm going to use this as a pathway to share with you just the NERICAD portfolio. So Elliot, as you move on to the next slide, uh, I can share the portfolio that we have here. So, and the reason why I wanted to share the slide, because Noreen, I want to tie it to what you talked about, right? The offense, defense, and incident response. So folks, Right now, if, if you wanted to get your feet wet and wanted to get started at NERICAT, it's intro to cyber. If you haven't and you're curious about what the field is, I would say go ahead and get started with intro to cyber. If you like it, move on to cybersecurity essentials. These are great courses for you to take on and explore your interest into the course. Then we move on to cyber ops associate where we are defending the network, you know, where we are analyzing. So that's more. Incident response that you talked about, Noreen, that's the course. In fact, next month we have the new Cyber Ops Associate course launching. So we're very excited and we are going to even launch badges with all of these. So I know that's a big question that I'm constantly asked on as we do this. How do I showcase my talent of, you know, I want to show it to the employers and I want to show it to folks that I've actually taken these courses. Now you can even on your social media site. Network security is the blue team, right? Defending the network that we talked about. So that's more defending the network is how to you. You have a network. So folks about this one, Jed, you talked about, you know, just being in the cloud security domain. When the security is in the cloud, how do we protect it? So again, folks, this is where these are some of the skills that we learn here. IoT security is one of those cool uh, courses that we have that teaches you the attack part of it. So we actually teach you ethical hacking on IoT devices through our IoT security course in the labs. So all pretty cool, right? You know, there's an array of things to get started, but without overwhelming you, I would start with the green path. Get started with this and depending on whether you find a mentor or you find a virtual mentor in today's world is just who will help you navigate and find where do you get started with on this journey. Elliot, if you move on to the next slide, I have a view here, right? So this talks about, this is the best way to think about it, the cybersecurity pathway. So it's intro to cyber, cybersecurity essentials, and the three paths that you could take on. 
So what's interesting, folks, is that I've been getting pings from a lot of questions. <laughs> I know we have to, we've been talking here for a couple of minutes, but you know the experiences that our panelists have shared have brought in a lot of questions. So give me a second where I quickly dive in and see what next do we have. I know we have around 10 minutes, so I'm going to make sure that we pick a good question for us. And then I will leave it open among the three, whoever would feel, uh, you know, good answering it. We can take that up. Let me go grab the questions. Oh, my, <laughs> it's hard. I think I have to just roll the dice here. I won't be able to pick up all of them. Let's see. Um, okay, so this one I like um, folks. One of the questions that we have is. How much creativity and critical thinking? So we're not talking technical from, from, from a non-technical aspect. How much creativity and critical thinking is involved in the cybersecurity field? Any takers from our panelists? Anybody would like to answer that? I can take that, Swati. Sure. Um, speaking from a threat intelligence perspective, I would say for me, will be 60% uh, because I have to have that critical mindset of thinking of the way of the attacker and and also now thinking of the way of the defender. So 60% for me, that's what it takes. I'll let it to Jed or Biswa to add in more. Yeah, I would say, I would say a lot of activity is needed when you want to be one step ahead of the hackers, all right? It's the captain mouse game, right? Like one one guy is one step ahead, and then you catch up, and you want to be one step ahead. So, and you cannot just um, uh, employ traditional thinking here, right? To be ahead of the game, uh, uh, yeah. I think be it development, be it operations, be it uh, incident response, be it investigating what really happened. Uh, I think you need to be on the top of your game in terms of creativity and innovation there. Perfect. That makes sense. Jed, any take on it? Yeah, no, I think uh, it definitely requires a different way of thinking, uh, especially different from like, you know, traditional IT um, where you're, you're basically just trying to support your company and you're trying to, you know, deploy applications or servers. But, you know, in the security space, you really need to be, you know, constantly on guard, you know, how can I secure this? How can this be broken into? Um, you know, how can I make sure this, you know, unauthorized access doesn't, you know, happen? Um, you know, you always kind of have to be thinking of what if. Um, you can't just be okay with, you know, you can't you can't just, you know, be okay with the first take at something. You you want to make sure that it's, you know, whatever you're doing, you're you're doing it well. Perfect. So I got another one, you know, while you guys were listening, I've perused this huge list. So I apologize already to the folks who have taken the time to ask the questions. Not sure if we'll get through all, but here's another good one that I have. So just looking at the field we talked about, one of the questions that's being asked is around the industry. Which industry, in your opinion, has the most cybersecurity jobs? You know, like, so we have, you know, across the domain, so like, Cisco works in networking and there are technology jobs and they're different, they're government jobs and then are healthcare jobs. So I'm just naming a few folks. Any take on where do you think the most cybersecurity jobs lie today? Yeah, yeah I can take that one. So I have I have seen a shift in uh, like for example, pre-COVID, there is a there is a perception around this sector needs uh, uh, most uh, Cybersecurity professionals, and that has been changing significantly, right? So uh, let's take an example: banking. Banking and the financial sector traditionally has required more security professionals, right? So that was pre-COVID. I think that has remained even in the post-COVID world. I would say. So I think that's probably by far uh, uh, the, the number one. What I have seen though, post-COVID. Uh, the school districts. So education sector is on a rock and roll journey for, for cybersecurity. Because if everybody is remote, they are they are figuring out online education uh, right at scale because no country wants to ignore education, which which is so foundational for the future of that country. Right. So I have seen a lot of need for sort of uplifting the security game. 
on uh, state, uh, government, uh, mostly the education sector, I would say. Um, clearly government, I think government is also rethinking their approach. Um, uh, right? For example, they're accelerating their journey to cloud. You'd probably think government is the last sector to transition to cloud. It will be mostly the innovators, uh, enterprise sector, and, and then the large company, then comes the government, no longer two, right? So government is sort of leading the way uh, uh, for massive scale uh, uh, journey to cloud there. Fantastic, and you're absolutely right, Biswai. In one of the studies that I noticed, that the number of job openings as well were really a lot in the government sector. I was surprised to see that, right? I expected to see it in the financial because they hold our money. I hope people in the bank, they have things right. They have our money. But along yeah. with that, the government had the jobs, which made me feel good. And by the way, this was not related to just one country, but across the globe, the maximum number of jobs were in the government sector. So that, that's always interesting to see. <laughs> um, any more takers? If not, I just looking at the number of questions, I'm going to ask the next one. So I see a lot of folks, you know, folks who have joined in, they are have taking already computer science. That's the course of study that they are taking in. And they want to understand from computer science, how do they move into cybersecurity? Is there a common pathway or what's the pathway for them to move from? Computer science to, or you know, programming to compute uh, cybersecurity. I can take that, Swati. Um, I have an engineering background degree, and when I when I was in college, cybersecurity was not what I was looking to when I graduated to be launching into. But as time changes, so we do. We have to adapt with times, and cybersecurity happened to be one of the career paths. But for students who are also taking a career, not only studies, not only just um, into cybersecurity, maybe computers, in science, information technology, or any other course, right? It's part of education. Education opens your mindset, a critical thinking, understanding the basics, and even being able to follow instructions, and right? And be able to bring your value to the table. Um, so, Every education that you're getting, I would say, is valuable to your career in cybersecurity because it's the skill, it's the, the the knowledge and the skill sets that you you learn in your during your educational program that you're gonna bring into this industry. Yes, the job might say a degree is required. So you have your computer engineering degree, you have your information technology, computer science. Take those programming classes, like this was said. You need maybe Python, right, or Java, or C, because you'll need that because we, we're moving into a world of automation. Automation requires a lot of um, scripting, and that comes from programming. So you're on the right career path. Keep on pursuing that. Get any education you're trying to get, and the future is bright for you. Fantastic. Jed, I have another question for you before, you know, as others are, because at Noreen, I think you did real justice for individuals moving on to this path. So, Jed, this one's specially for you because, again, I think you're a prime candidate for this. The individuals who are asking, like, they have very little experience, right? And and as you shared your journey from Neticad, you actually got a job from an internship, converting that internship to a job. So, could you, again, elaborate and give examples to our listeners here just on how does having low experience doesn't prevent them from entering this field of cybersecurity? Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, kind of goes to along with what Noreen said about, you know, exposure, um, you know, just take any opportunity you can get, honestly. Um, you know, if you're kind of, you, you may not have the experience, but if you, you know, have education and you're confident in that knowledge, you can find someone out there who's willing to take a bet on you. And it, it really comes down to that, you know, you got to find the right place that is looking for someone, um, you know, like you. Um, and, you know, when you, if you do get that opportunity, you know, run with it, um, you know, just show them everything, you know, and, you know, work hard. Um, you know, I, I think that's the base of it. Fantastic. So, folks, we are on the top of the hour. I see a lot of questions and we'll try our best to answer them, if not here through Facebook or other channels, like we always do to answer that again, as a reminder, uh, 
just I'll quickly answer the last question before we wrap off and give it to Rebecca. There was a question around certifications, right? You know, the importance of certifications and do they really hold worth? And I can tell you that certification has a huge advantage, right? So especially for someone who is working into the field for the first time, because that's that's how you differentiate yourself from the other candidates, right? It's not that if you have a certification, so you're best in the market, right? You definitely need the skills along with the certifications. But if there are 10 people with equal skills and you have that certification, it gives you that advantage. So uh, check out for the new cyber ops certifications that has already been released and NetAcad is releasing the cyber ops associate course next month. Something to keep in mind. We also have good things coming up for cloud security that was discussed here today. So a lot of exciting things happening here at NetAcad. And before I pass it off to Rebecca, I want to thank once again to all of our wonderful panelists. Thank you for your time. I am telling you it's just due to lack of uh, you know, time that I'm not able to ask the questions, but there's been a great response for all three of you. You have made some new fans here who've been inspired and hopefully you would encourage them to find themselves in your shoes right in the future. That's what the series is called find yourself in the future. So hopefully we are actually chatting with one of our future panelists that can come and talk to us about cybersecurity. So that's all we had for today. Thank you once again for joining in. Rebecca, the ball's back in your court. Thank you so much. Swati and panel, thank you so, so much for this valuable discussion on cybersecurity. And we've had a lot of great questions in this chat session, folks, and we just didn't have the time to get to it, but we really appreciate your engagement. For those of you um, out there, please complete the brief survey, and then you'll receive, it, receive a certificate for your participation here today, and then you can add that to your LinkedIn mm -hmm. profile. And if you've heard LinkedIn once, you've heard it 20 times. So if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, start building it now, and you can add this. Also, please watch for an email today providing you with a link to create your profile on the Talent Bridge engine. And I think you, hopefully you saw in this session the value of the Talent Bridge engine, bridge engine and beginning to build those connections. Um, thank you so much for joining us, everyone out there. Okay. Watch for invitations um, to these events for next year. I want to ask you to enjoy the rest of your day. Please stay safe and stay well during this challenging time. And remember to practice good cyber hygiene. Take care, everyone, and thanks for your interest in Cisco Networking Academy. Be well. April 16th, 2018. This is Tokyo. This is Rakuten. These are Cisco executives invited to a meeting with Rakuten. This is Tarek Amin, CTO of Rakuten Mobile. This is Prakash Suthar, team leader from Cisco Customer Experience. Namaskar, good morning. This is a story about doing something that's never been done before. Prakash, I need someone to help me build the world's first end-to-end -end cloud native network. We need a partner. Let's do it. In order for this to work, it has to be optimized for 5G. We'll design it from scratch. Fully automated. Fully virtualized. Cloud. Core. Transport. Virtual RAN. Everything. everything. It will be the first of its kind. Oh, yeah. You can figure it out. We can figure it out. This is their idea. It's an ambitious idea. An unprecedented idea. It's true. But this is what industry executives called it. Impossible. 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 But that didn't stop them. That just made them hungry. So, Prakash, how about developers? We'll create a platform.